Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this, the fifth Sunday in Pentecost. These warm days are the days we think about and dream of in February, and we certainly are feeling the warmth in the church today. It is the first Sunday of the month, and so we begin with the territorial acknowledgement. As we gather here today, we wish to acknowledge that we are on land, that at the time of contact was the traditional territory of the Three Fires Confederacy and the Anishinaabe peoples. We thank all the generation of indigenous people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years. May we who dwell on or visit this land always be good stewards honoring those who came before us, and as we seek to move forward in truth and reconciliation. The service of the Eucharist with spiritual communion follows much of what we know at the 10 o'clock service from the Book of Alternative Services, beginning on page 185. And so we continue with the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to you, all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has taught us that we are to do for the least of your children, we also do for him. Give us the will to serve others, as he was the servant of all, who gave up his life and died for us, but lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I am feeling a bit overwhelmed these days. Not a surprising statement to hear, but perhaps one you wouldn't expect from the rector. It seems that these days I'm looking for the smallest things that give us all hope that we're moving forward through the pandemic. The other day I was walking along First Street and I noticed that the Tim Hortons was open for the first time since the beginning of the pandemic. 
because they don't have a drive-through. It was now open to walk-in orders, and although you couldn't stay and have your coffee, it was a change, a step in the right direction. We look for this sort of thing in a time which I describe as boredom mixed with anxiety. We are anxious about our health and the health of those we love, while at the same time we are bored with the routine of not being able to come together except under restrictions and in very limited circumstances. It is for the good of others that as we continue to be socially and physically distancing, washing our hands and staying safe, it is for the good of all, and we must remember that. Jesus' words in today's reading are words that I think we all need to hear at this time. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. These are words those who come to our 830 service know well because they are repeated every week and make up part of which is known as the comfortable words or comfy words as they are sometimes known. Those that labor and are heavy laden will be refreshed by Jesus. This is the takeaway from these verses. So let us unpack what they mean for us. I divided what was read by verse, beginning with verse 28, come to me and following. Verse 29, take my yoke upon you. And finally, verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So Matthew 11, verse 28, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Jesus is inviting all people, not a specific group in a specific time, but all those who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. That would include everyone, at one point, at least in their lives. During the pandemic, possibly, most of us have felt weary and like we are carrying heavy burdens. I've talked to a number of you who have either had the COVID test or know someone who has had one. I had the test a couple of weeks ago, and I tested negative. Getting the test was a well-run operation, and I commend those frontline workers for their patience, for their caring presence, in what are a series of protocols that are repeated day in and day out I'm sure that they know what boredom mixed with anxiety means. Thankfully, having tested negative, I would say that it made me think about how if I had tested positive, I would have had to call all those who I'd come in contact with and burden them with my news. I'm the one who usually calls people to help them with their burdens, to listen, to pray with them. And this is something I think that I've always done, and I pray that all of us always do. And that's certainly true during the pandemic, as I have heard from many of you reaching out to those around you. We are all to bring the light of Christ in our lives, to lighten the burdens of others. And this leads me to my second point, verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. We can learn from Jesus to be gentle and humble in heart. This point is short and simple. I remember when my father died very early on in my ministry at St. Mark's, about 19 years ago, exactly this month, in fact. I remember a lot of words of comfort, but it was a hug, a hug from our chicken, Marion Vincette, that I remember most. 
She knew that I had a burden, what I was carrying, and all I needed at that moment was a hug. The fancy language for this is a theology of presence, showing up, being with people in their time of need. Jesus was there for people then and is present with us now, as he promised. We are called to do the same, to be there when called upon, when needed. Verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You will notice that there is still a yoke, but there's still a burden. But they are easy and light. We have been shown also that this new way, this digital way of doing things over the internet has its challenges as we try to log on each week hoping at both ends that the technology will work when we put out and reach out through the technology and you receive it. There are a number of things that can happen along the way that don't go in our favor. And we certainly know that this is nothing like being in person, being here in person in worship and being here in person in our ministry. That is our yoke. That is our burden at this time. We have been living through a very difficult, difficult, a different time. As we come to the fourth, the end of the fourth month since the bishops closed the Anglican churches in Ontario, what has been revealed to us is that we miss each other, we miss the church, and we miss fellowship. God is with us, and it has been my experience more so in times of need than at any other time in our life. This is what the passage is about. It is for the weary, carrying heavy burdens. Jesus is gentle and humble of heart, present to us, and we find rest in our souls. We are still worshiping God, still singing God's praises. We are still doing ministry, and I very much appreciate your ongoing support through your donations to the church over this time. We are reaching out now to vulnerable groups by permission of the bishop. And so our food cupboard has opened this week and 12 step groups with a limit of 10 are allowed back into the church building. We have the primate, the head of the Anglican Church of Canada coming to us next week. And today we celebrate Eucharist online first time in our ministry here at St. Mark's. And we have received a $5,000 grant from the Emergency Community Support Fund. This will be for technical supports to develop our parish digital ministry further. And I have been speaking with the man behind the camera, Liam Croft, who I pray and I think he will accept being our technical coordinator through which these funds will be used to support his work at least until Christmas. We will make that official as we go forward, but we all pray that that will be the case, as you know, of his marvelous work. Signs of hope. Signs, although, that we have to carry on with the burden and yoke of not being together. I pray as we go forward that we take Jesus' words of hope and comfort into our lives and those we meet this week, words that I pray help us all and help those we meet in the week ahead. Amen.
Today, we continue with the Apostles' Creed. It is found on page 189 in the Book of Alternative Services for those following along. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Friends in Christ, God invites us to hold the needs of our brothers and sisters as dear to us as our own needs. Loving our neighbors as ourselves, we offer our thanksgivings and our petitions on behalf of the church and the world. The response to come, bring your burden to God is let the burden be light. God of love and grace, we pray for all those today who are weighted down by the burdens of life, to the overlooked and the silenced, who carry the oppressive yoke of injustice and poverty, or the fear-ridden religious yoke of always having to get things right. Give us the courage and humility to know that the invitation is also for us. Come, bring your burden to God. Let the burden be light. We pray for the millions across the world who will go to bed hungry tonight and face an uncertain future. For those who are dragged before the world's criticism and know that getting through today stacks up worries for tomorrow. Come, bring your burdens to God. Let the burden be light. Father God, we pray for the people in our community. Give us sensitivity and insight into their needs and weaknesses so that we may learn to truly love our neighbors as ourselves. Come, bring your burdens to God. Help us to be responsible and sens sensible in our increasing interactions with those around us so that we may do our part to stop the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Come, bring your burdens to God. Let the burdens be light. Gracious God, we pray for the people we know who are anxious, ill, or bereaved. We pray that you will lead them and us in peace towards healing and wholeness of mind and spirit. This week we pray for Cynthia and Andy, Johanna, Ryan, Bill, Elizabeth, Lee, Kristen, Ken and Richard, and Deacon Jane Rokeby, Jeff, Michael, Kay, Samantha. Come, bring your burdens to God. Lift up your prayers for those who carry the burden of leadership in the church, for Susan, our bishop, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. Come, bring your burdens to God. Heavenly Father, help us to lay down the fear and anger and pride that imprison us so that we can harness our hearts to Jesus each day to receive joy and love and life and rest for our souls. Come, bring your burdens to God. We give you thanks, O God of compassion, for the salvation you have revealed to the little ones through Christ Jesus, 
our wisdom and strength. Teach us to take this gentle yoke and find rest from our burdens and cares. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and inviting us to this holy table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Again, we continue to give thanks for those who support our church through uh, pre-authorized giving or e-transfer or through snail mail. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, receive our sacrifice of praise and strengthen us for the perfect freedom of your service through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the living God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We rest in you, timeless one. Give us peace, bringer of hope. You have knit us together and breathed your life into us. Your spirit moves, beckoning us to join your song. You wait to speak, even though we are slow to listen. You call us in still, small voices. Command us to be still and know you in the depths of our being, beyond the veil of time. Still us now, so that even more aware of our connection with you and with all who seek you in faith, we may find and repeat the praises that ring from the rocks of earth to the saints in light, as we say, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We bring to this table, God of grace, all the concerns we carry, all the gifts we have to author, all of the hope we long to see fulfilled, so that as bread and wine are transformed, we may experience your presence and our restless hearts find rest in you. Speak to us as Christ spoke to those first disciples when gathered at a table. Jesus took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave you thanks, and shared it, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Come, Holy Spirit, upon these gifts. Open us to receive Christ afresh in the depths of our heart. Transform us so that we may be moved to adore the one whose mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. We worship you, we adore you, we seek you, we await you. Amen. Alleluia. 
As our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We being many of one body, for we all share one bread. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, I invite you in this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, unseen and yet present with us now. Many are made one. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome your presence in us, and together we proclaim our love for you with our hearts minds, our souls, and our strength, with the saints who worship you, with the angels who adore you, with your whole church we proclaim your reign. Come to us through many and make us one in you.
Let us pray. Jesus, I believe that you are present with us in this sacrament of bread and wine. I love you, and I desire your presence afresh in my life. Since I cannot now receive the bread and wine of the altar, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself to you. Never let me be separated from you. Amen. And for the children in the congregation, Lord Jesus, thank you that you are always with me. I pray that you would remind me to welcome you to share every day with me. Thank you for loving me. I want to say that I love you too. Amen. God of heaven and earth, receive our sacrifice of praise and strengthen us for the perfect freedom of your service. May we who have shared in holy things never fail to serve you in your world and so come to the fullness of joy in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who receive Christ's presence live his risen life and bring life to others. And me, who the Spirit lights, Give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. And now Tracy is going to talk to the lions. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Lions. I hope you've had a good week. Today, we're looking at prophets. Way back before Jesus arrived, in the Old Testament times, God sent judges or prophets to lead and protect the people. Moses, for example, was a very important prophet. Other prophets in the Old Testament include Amos, Jonah, Micah, Isaiah, and Jeremiah. 
They were usually regular people with regular lives that God chose to be his messengers or truth tellers to the people. Their job was to spread the word about what God wanted the people to know and do. But the people of Israel, God's people, still had a hard time listening. Amos the prophet was a simple man. He was a shepherd who spent his whole life getting sheep where they needed to go, offering correction where necessary. He was well suited for the task God had given him, correcting God's people and leading them back to where they belonged. But the prophets didn't always want the job. Do you remember Jonah? He was given an important job to do by God and didn't want to do it at all. So he ran away and ended up in the belly of a whale. But he did the job in the end. You might remember that when we were in class, we have talked about the Ten Commandments. Those are the rules given to Moses by God. Moses' community, the Israelites, was given a pretty specific set of rules to follow in the Ten Commandments, but they had a hard time remembering one of the most important rules. Worship only the Lord your God. They constantly forgot that God was their God and they shouldn't worship idols. Idols are anything that we put to be more important to us than God. Back in the days of the Old Testament, God's people tended to fall back to their old ways of worshipping objects like golden statues, images, or even the sun or moon. They thought the object was in charge of what happened in their lives, so gave it all their attention and thanks. Still, God never gave up on God's people. In the New Testament, in Jesus' time, John the Baptist, as he is known, was a man with a plan. He had been chosen by God to bring a message to the people about Jesus. So he was a prophet too. He had a strong message for the people around him that told the people that Jesus, the Messiah, was going to arrive among them to start teaching them soon. John was a startling man. He liked to eat honey, locusts, grasshoppers, and bugs. What would you think if you met John the Baptist wearing clothes made out of animal skins and eating bugs? Would you listen to what he had to say? John the Baptist told people that Jesus was coming. Some people listened to John the Baptist. Many people did not listen. They thought they were smarter than he was. To them, John was too weird. They knew better. And when Jesus arrived in the community to teach and explain God to people, eating, drinking, and living like a regular person, many decided he couldn't be God's chosen Messiah. He was too regular, too ordinary. Guess what? They didn't know best either. In fact, Jesus said the people best suited to hear God's word were children, or like children. Not that they were little or young, but that they were willing to listen, hear new ideas, and keep an open mind. So, Let's pray. Dear God, please help us to keep an open mind, able to listen to different ideas and points of view, and not get too caught up in needing to be right all the time. Help us to hear what you are saying among all the noise of our world. Remind us to respect kids, help those who need our help without criticizing or judging them, and help us to see you in every person we meet. Amen. Having received Christ by faith, let us go to live in that faith, transformed by hope and proclaiming God's love.